Hi, uh, and welcome. This is Frank McGrady. I'm the Director of Experiential Education at Hudson University School of Pharmacy. Um, today, I would like to deliver a video of what's happening, or video or a recording of what's happening with preceptor development pearls. This is uh, primarily intended for people who are looking to gain some skills or a new preceptor or would like to have a chance to uh, learn some new skills and how they might set up a preceptor uh, situation for our students to come. As we know, students uh, coming to our sites are a pretty awesome thing, but they're also a big responsibility. I'm going to go through this presentation today uh, somewhat rapidly because there's not an audience out there to to interact with too much. I'll try to add some anecdotal information that I have had heard in the past, but in general, we're gonna to try to get through this in maybe, I don't know, 30 or 40 minutes. Um, there is a chance to get uh, CE credit for this if you'd like to, um, and also ask us questions if you need to. We are uh, available here at Hassan uh, all throughout the year, uh, Monday through Friday, and other chances, uh, depending on what has to happen in an emergency, we can be helped as well. So. Preceptor Development Pearls by Frank McGrady. Um, what I'd like to do is to have you um, understand a few different things that we're trying to do. Um, there's pearls that we'll talk about. We'll also talk about how to have a positive preceptor experience. We wanna talk a little bit, and I'm gonna do that first, about the Accreditation Council of Pharmacy Education 2016 uh, standards. Um, I'll only say, and then we'll have some questions at the end. But primarily what I want to do it with the Accreditation Council of Pharmacy Education is just to say there are some new standards that have been set up and I'm going to record a video for that. And so please view that to talk about some of the differences in the past and some of the differences that uh, colleges of pharmacy are now being held to in, in regards to pharmacy education uh, for, our, for our future pharmacists. The 2016 standards really are, are, are a couple different things. One of the things they've added is a lot of talk about interprofessional education. A lot of people are doing that already with interprofessional uh, collaboration. I, I know in the hospital I was in, we were doing a lot of that every day. We get together with all of the, the physical therapists, the occupational therapists. We get together with nursing, physicians, providers, uh, nutrition, social work. There, there's a lot of people that get together and collaborate every day to benefit a patient. That stuff needs to be uh, taught a little bit more in pharmacy school. So we're really uh, uh, doing things here, which we can go into later that are, that are coming through with that. Some of the other standards have listed that um, the interprofessional, the, um, sorry, the introductory or IPPE, inter interprofessional pharmacy practice experiences are now called pre-API experiences. It's to get them ready for their advanced pharmacy uh, practice experiences during their fourth or last year when they're out doing um, visiting sites and uh, working at sites for six week rotations here at Hassan. And so we're trying to create a, a culture where the IPPEs prepare you for the APPEs, which prepare you to be a practice pharmacist. Um, you can't have knowledge of everything out there, but the process should be clearly indicated and it should be clearly measurable and it should be ready for pharmacists to get out there hitting the ground. They, they won't be specialists in cardiac care or ID or anything, but they should definitely have an experience with how to evaluate a patient and how to make recommendations for that patient and to, and to communicate clearly with them. A couple of the other things that the uh, 2016 standards have I've indicated is one is that they really want us to work hard on the reflective process uh, of being lifelong learners. We have in all of our rotations, each week they have to complete a reflection document. And this document is really to kind of say what they did last week, what they're gonna do the next week and how that affected them and what they might do when they practice going forward. Uh, the example I use a lot of times is, is when you go out to a restaurant. When you go to a restaurant, you go there, you eat, you kind of evaluate what's going on. You know, how was it? What were my goals there? I wanted a good meal. I wanted a nice place to uh, be able to sit and talk, whether it's an intimate conversation with, uh, with, with a spouse or a loved one, or it might be with a group of people. Or it might be with some friends. It might be with a couple couples or even this, a couple different couples. It's such, whatever the situation, you go in there with expectations. And when you leave there, after having the meal, after having all that you've done for that, that particular process, you do a reflection. 
you reflect back on what was it like, what was the food like, what was the atmosphere like, what were the prices like, was the, was the service good? You, have, you do a reflective activity, and I know it seems like it should be natural, but it's not as natural when it comes to thinking about your education. And as lifelong learners, we need to make sure that that process comes into play. These standards have also um, outlined a lot of different other things that are more um, on the line of what stool, schools need to get ready to have them uh, students be prepared to go out in the practice world. So we'll talk about that on, uh, on another video. So the objectives I've listed here, um, I'm going to read them. Normally I don't read them, but I'm going to read them here for you. Objectives discuss the expectations of the preceptor by the School of Pharmacy for IPPEs and APPEs. Number two, discuss the expectations of the institu institutional site directors. That's the people at the actual site for the preceptor and the pharmacy technician staff. Number three, discuss the expectations of the IPP and APP students by the School of Pharmacy and the institutional preceptor. Recommend options, number four, recommend options to attain the expectations of all parties involved in the IP and APP pharmacy student experience, ex uh, experiential experience. And number five, recommend options to all uh, the institutional staff, but not limited to the pharmacy technicians, ancillary staff, planning and, and the planning and implementation of the pharmacy student experience. So first things first, uh, it's no different than setting up a business where it's location, location, location. Here it's, if you want to have a successful experience, you must prepare, 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 because when the Students come to your site, you, don't, you want to hit the ground running, you don't want to be scrambling because you're, most people who are preceptors are not from the School of Pharmacy where it's their only, not their only job, but one of the jobs they do. Most people who are precepting already have jobs. They have full-time jobs. They have very busy jobs. So you have to prepare ahead because you sometimes can't do that on the fly. So where do we start? Here's a list that I listed on here and we'll go through a lot of these. These are the expectations for the preceptor. Do you know what the pharmacy school is looking for? Your director of pharmacy, your own pharmacy staff, the hospital staff. How about what, what the expectations of the student are? How about preceptor training, student training, workspace, anything else that might affect your ability to effectively precept a student? So let's kind of go down through that list. The first one is the pharmacy school. And not all the preceptors have to be concerned with this, but we always have contracts and agreements because we have to understand liability insurance. We have to understand um, what each site is expecting when students come there and what the process will be as far as them getting oriented, the credentials they need to have. An example might even be what sort of vaccinations they've had. They may need to be drug tested. There are a lot of things that we come up with an agreement that we say that's what the student will have to do before they can be to our, come to our site. We look at credentials, we're going to always look at preceptor credentials to see, have you been a preceptor for two years? Have you uh, done this before? Have you, if you're in a different state, we work with other colleges of pharmacy to say, you know, do you also precept students for their school of pharmacy? What sort of training do you need? What does the course syllabus look like? The syllabus, all these preceptors, these APPE courses are a, a college course students are paying the college for this course and there are certain outcomes that need to be um, validated in order to say that the course was actually completed and benefited the student and then kind of what the evaluation process is how do you know what we're doing how does this work what's your online uh, computer what what do you need to have and there may be other things that come up to you that you might have a question about that you need to ask and find out but find out from the pharmacy school find out from me the experiential coordinator or my uh, manager of uh, operations at at the uh, office of Exper experiential education here at Hassan Katie Rosignal she's fabulous I've listed both of our emails later in this so if you need info numbers if you need to call us next we want to know if you're at a, if you're at, and this may seem like it's just for hospital, but it's not for hospital. This is for any site. There are some things that are, that are particular to hospitals and some to community pharmacies. But what does your supervisor expect of you? When, when will students be assigned? How many students are expected per year? What support will you be given? How will this be part of your job and evaluation? And other things and other pertinent information that you want to know from your supervisor. Because if your supervisor 
doesn't give you good support on this, then and this could affect your experience. This could affect the experience for the student. And it could be it could be a tough situation for everybody. And that's not what we're looking for. So you want to make sure that you understand what your supervisor has outlined for you. Because I know they don't want you to drop off in your uh, ability to do, to do your job, but they also understand how important it is to, to uh, um, educate the next generation. How about the pharmacy staff? You got to check in with all of them. You got to check in with your technicians. Your technicians are going to play a key role in education of pharmacy students um, because technicians are such an integral part of what we do and such an important part. I like to call them in my hospital lab that I teach here at the university. I teach them. It's called, I call them gold because without the gold, you can't do the cool stuff. If those technicians aren't taking care of all those, those tasks that need to be completed every single day for compliance, for uh, supply, for everything that needs to be done in documentation, especially in billing. Uh, if you don't have all that stuff done, if your technicians don't do that, then you can't do the cool stuff. But on the other side, you can't just throw a student at them and say, here, teach them everything you know. Outline it, decide how you want it to work make sure that they understand what their role in this is and are they going to be able to accommodate what you're looking for. If you have a pharmacy manager, if you're not the pharmacy manager, you have a manager for either a department or for a, a district or even for a, um, an area like a hospital and check in with them, make sure that they're on board. What are their expectations when the student's there? Some people say, we only want the students on site in the morning, we only want them in the afternoon. And you have to clearly articulate what's going on with the student, what the expectations are to the manager. And another person would be a pharmacy specialist. This might be more like uh, what's going on in a hospital. Um, we might want to talk with a clinical pharmacist, the IV pharmacist. Again, some of this is um, uh, related to hospital, but the other might be your partner in pharmacy. If you're in a, a community retail or an ambulatory care situation, you may want to make sure the other pharmacists who you work with, that they also understand what their expectations are so that the student may be with other people. It's good for them to get a, as broad an experience as they can, but getting on board with your pharmacy staff and let them know what the plan is, what your expectations are, what their expectations are, will make everything run much smoother and give the student and yourself a very positive experience. And that's what we're really looking for. Also, I, I, I wrote hospital staff on here, and I'm sorry to make this seem so geared towards hospital because I've been doing a few hospital experiences recently, but I wanna make sure that your company or your hospital is on board. Does your CEO, your CFO, your district manager, your regional manager, are they all sure about what you're doing and what's what their what the expectations are from you and what your expectations are from them in hospitals we have nursing physical therapy occupational therapy surgery case managers physician security at retail we may have a, a number of things with um, your front end managers your managers of the store not not all of them are pharmacy people your technicians your regional managers, your, your uh, district managers, uh, you may need to make sure to interact with all these people to understand what the expectations they have of you and what you have of them and to make sure that it's clear what the process is going to be. The more you do this ahead of time, again, prepare, 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 the less chance you have of having a, a, a negative situation where somebody gets caught off guard and feels like they're being taken advantage of or they're not clear and they, they end up uh, pushing a, a lot back on you. The next thing that I would say, and it's an, it's, it's an important one, is you have to find out what the expectations of the student are. Now, I do this both ways when I can talk about students. You have to know what their course is. You know, are they in an over-the-counter course? Is it, just a hus is it just a community course? Is it a hospital course? Is it acute care? Is it what sort of what sort of situation um, are they feel like, what, what is this course and, and what do the syllabus say and what are their recommendations? Also find out, kind of get to know the student a little bit, know what their preferences are, know what their background are, know what their strengths and weaknesses are because we want to play to their strengths but we also want to develop their weaknesses. A great example of that is communication. Um, in school, we're all simulating everything, you know, they, they, and, and, but when you get out in the real world, it's the real world. When someone hollers at you or somebody has a question for you on something important, you need to be able to clearly and without uh, getting too upset, give good communication to people. 
You also want to know what block number they're on because a student in block one, two, or three is still learning in their process or if they're an IPI or API, it's earlier in their career, they may not know anything as far as drug knowledge, but as they move along, they should be higher expectations should be set. Um, and then what their past experiences will be. One thing I'll tell you under the other is that's this, that I, I would find with it, most preceptors forget to do. You want to be a nice person. You are a nice person. You are a preceptor. You've decided to, to give some of your time to help somebody else, but you've also got to be the person that lays down the groundwork for this student. You have to let them know what the expectations are. Do not expect a student just to show up and expect that they're gonna be professional in every way, that they're going to love this particular course, that they're going to try as hard as they can all the time. Many students will be, and some students will be such a, a high performer that you, it's, hard, it's hard to give them enough material and other students are not understanding your expectations and start to fall behind. You need to be ready to give feedback. Feedback is a very important process of precepting. If you're not able to do that, if you have a, a fear of doing that or you have some issue, issue with doing that, you're gonna struggle a little bit because the student will start to veer off the path and you'll get frustrated and so will they in the end. And it could come to a situation where you it may come to an impasse and we don't want to get to that point. So lay the groundwork ahead of time, prepare for it, let them know what your expectations are. It's great to know what they want, what they're looking for, but this is a course you're teaching. You have a job. They are, you are the preceptor. They are the students. So now we want to know what's expected of the preceptor. You know, what is the, what do we need from the site? What does the site want? What does the pharmacy school want? You have two evaluations if you're an API student. You have one evaluation you need to complete for your an IPI student. You also have um, uh, documents that you need to make sure that they're doing. You have to find out what the course is. What are the expectations? You have to find out what the student has to do and what you have to do for the student. You have to verify hours. You have to sign off on hours. You have to find out what your strengths are. Make sure you know what you're strong with and don't just stick there. Also realize that you have to uh, take care of every bit of, of what you need to do. And if you feel like giving feedback is not one of your strengths, then we need to work on that. You need to really be ready. Their students often find that their preceptor is someone that even after just six weeks or three weeks is someone they ask for a reference. And you have to decide whether you can be a reference or not. Just because someone asks you to do that does not necessarily mean that you are the right reference for them. But in the same light, the idea here is that you can build quite a relationship with someone in a brief period of time and it can be very strong. And so you don't want to upset them or make them feel bad or think you're a, you're, you're, you're mean or, or uh, don't approve of what they're doing, but you've got to give feedback, make it early, make it don't wait. If you notice something's out there, pull them aside. Don't call them out in front of other people. It, it, it embarrasses them and you think that might be the best way to do it, but it isn't always. Um, but pull them aside and give your feedback and expect them to not receive it necessarily great when they first get it, but they should come back and understand what the expectations are. Everybody should understand feedback. Feedback is a whole nother topic that we'll bring up. I've seen some great presentations recently on that. Know what your projects are that you're gonna work on while they're there. Know what service you can offer to the department, to customers, to anybody uh, on your location. And then also know um, about what sort of education you're going to need. What are you going to need? Sometimes people don't become preceptors because they're like, well, I've been away from school for so long. I had that very fear myself. I thought these students are coming out. They're going to know the current guidelines are going to know all this stuff. But, you know, in the end, they don't know really what practice is like. That's the thing they need the most is to understand how to function in practice. As far as learning guidelines and doing things, you can kind of do that together and it's sort of fun. I mean, you can actually get them to teach you some things. As long as you're not going to let your ego get in the way, you can learn a lot. And they learn a tremendous amount for you just learning to function. And find out what other things might be expected of the preceptor. Here's some of my pearls. Work to your strengths. If you're in a clinical area that has a, a strong area, you have a strong expertise like, um, like um, cardiology or it might be infectious disease or pediatrics, or you might be in management or you might be in some sort of leadership. Um, use those as the key part to kind of direct what you're doing. You'll know from the course that they need to cover more than just a certain subject. They might 
need to cover. And if it's a, a acute care situation, you might need to make sure they understand um, pneumonia, COPD. They might have another, you know, uh, stress ulcers. There may be a lot of things that they need to to learn. So, but. Work from your from work from your strength and add those other pieces in as you go. If you're really strong in the pharmacy uh, with uh, leadership and management, teach them about that while you're there, as well as their their clinical areas of expertise. I know because when pharmacists come out and work in community practice or even in hospital practice, they need to know the expectation of what their job will look like. Even if they're not doing it at the moment, they need to know they have to be able to direct the technicians. They have to be able to work with problem patients. They gotta work with problem insurance problems. They have to look for when they're out of drugs, what they're gonna, out of medications that patients might need, what they're going to do. Um, I would really avoid busy work. Don't just give them work to give them work. Try to find meaningful things. And again, if you prepare ahead of time, you'll have things that you wanna know about. Tell me about these three new drugs. I got this drug recently and I'm not sure what to tell patients. Can you give me something I have to give them all the time? What are you doing for whatever scenario might be going on at your practice and have them look it up. I know for hospitals, USP 800, I know a number of pharmacists use their students to go out and look and find out what's going on. I've also had other people work on um, ways to help uh, uh, counsel patients when, when they're either in the community pharmacy or in the hospital. Develop the student as much as possible. It's not just your role to do this. You don't have to do this eight hours a day, every day you're there. You need to be able to send them off to do things on their own. They need to be able to work on their own, but give them guidance. You're there to give them guidance. You're really not there to be their, their buddy or friend. You're there to be a mentor. You're there to develop them. You really want them to grow. Um, even though they might be a nice person, they, you don't want them to feel bad. They may be like, oh, I don't want to work this long, or I don't want to do that. You need to develop them because soon, within that last year especially, they're going to be a pharmacist. And if someone never pushed them to the point of realizing they're a pharmacist, you'll be surprised at how many people, after they become a pharmacist, look back and they say, thank you for pushing me. Even at the time, they didn't feel like they really enjoyed it. And the feedback they received at times, they weren't always happy with, but they realized how much it helped. Also looks to projects that you can facilitate learning and help the site. One of the things I found at um, some of the places that, we, that I, I visit all the time with students is medication reconciliation. Making sure we have the right medication list. Make sure that this is done. And we go through a process and we help, we have our students do this and actually facilitate what's going on at the, the site. It helps. Discharge counseling. You know, if you're a community site, I would use those students all day to get out there and counsel every single one of your patients. We have an Obra 90 law that's been on the books since 1990, and we still have a hard time getting out there and counseling. It's hard because we want to counsel all the new ones. We want to offer counseling to everybody else, but I think just getting them out there talking to people and counseling, and if they stumble, if they're not sure, then they're going to have to come back to you and they may say, help me, what do I tell this person who's asked this question? But most of the time, they're going to start to learn, and you can start focusing on them on the kind of things that most, that most of the prescriptions are for at your site. Um, and actually in hospitals, when you're discharging them, you can have them working on the types of things that happen uh, more often than not. And they can prepare a little bit more in the hospital. They can prepare a little bit more even in the pharmacy. If you have them look at the prescription, look at those, those handouts that come with, actually give a lot of information. And we rely a little too much on that. But I want you to get that, get them out there and push them to learn. Help your site. Because remember, a customer that is satisfied with what you've done for them comes back. We are in a business as well. I don't want to push that too much, but I, I think you all know that. We can think, let's get rid of all these crappy customers because they're, they're not very nice, but it's amazing. Everybody has a bad moment. We don't want to get rid of all of our customers. We're building a business here. All right. Look for those projects. That's my point. New medications. These are things you can you can you can look for. If there's new medications out there, have them talk to you about it. Tell, find out what it is. Find out what the side effects are. Have them have them give you the big picture, then maybe a real small picture about what we need to tell our patients. Look at new policies and procedures. Is there a better way of doing things? Have they seen something somewhere else? Guidelines. We have lots and lots of guidelines coming out. It used to be there were only a certain number of guidelines for heart failure for. Uh, hypertension for hyperlipidemia they, they I mean they these things change every couple of years you can have someone give you a guideline on what it looks like uh, or a, um, a synopsis of what's happening with a recent guideline um, 
collaborate with other preceptors and pharmacists. So have them talk with other people, see what other people are doing, make sure they're working with other pharmacists because you have your process, uh, community, hospital, ambulatory care, any site like this, any, any sort of practice, and you have your own process, but other people have different processes and sometimes it's nice to see what a different process looks like. Make sure that pharmacists, the students really get into the daily flow and facilitate the site. It's not just about being with a pharmacist and what a pharmacist does. It's also understanding things like in the hospital, like Pixis, or in both situations, or, or, or in community or in ambulatory care, there may be how, where the prescriptions are coming from. How do they get them? What's the process? Wholesalers, we need to know the ordering process. We know about IV preparation. We also have to know about compounding. We don't do a tremendous amount of compounding in community anymore, but we do compound things. We do put things together and they ought to know what that is. And there may be other th things that are particular to your site that you need to be prepared for. So the second, so here's, a, here's the pearl. I, I mentioned this earlier. I don't want to hammer this home. I, I did a presentation re recently and I said, sometimes you got to get out that big Thor hammer and you got to put the hammer down and say, this is my expectation. Set it early so they understand and make sure they know what to do when they don't know what to do. Make sure they need to know what they're doing when you're not around. If they have, if you assign things for them to do, let them know what the timeline is, what the expectation is. And if they have a problem, they need to let you know early. The worst thing that could happen is they prepare a presentation that you haven't seen and that they deliver it to somebody and it's not what you're, not what you're expecting or not to the level of uh, ability that you would like to see. So that, that has to be known. When asking questions of a student, make it clear that they need to know what a pharmacist knows. I had a site once recently that said a pharmacist student went out, got all this information together, and basically it was what anybody else could have told that pharmacist. This is, and the pharmacist actually said, this wasn't derogatory and negative, but they said, this is what a doctor could have told me, this is what a nurse could have told me. I wanna know, this is about what a pharmacist knows. You need to go above and beyond the general knowledge. You need to know, impress that drug-drug interactions, drug disease, a disease without a drug, a drug without a disease. Um, there are a lot of things that pharmacists have to look at. Are there adverse drug events? Are, is, there, is there a reaction that we're not seeing? Is there a... Is there an inadequate dose or is there a, you know, are we not targeting doses to goals? This is what pharmacists need to do. Pharmacy students need to know that. Remember about the interprofessional education or out in the field, it's really interprofessional collaborate, collabor collaboration, sorry. Um, communication, make sure that they're really working on their communication skills, even if it's simple things. And if they don't know the answer, I hate for a student to initially say, I'll get back to you. But if they do say that, make sure they get back to that person because that person in some ways won't care, but they won't trust pharmacy again if the answer does not come back. Look for resources that can help you with your precepting. The pharmacist, pharmacist letter, um, the School of Pharmacy, we have a lot of sites um, that you can, you can look for that will actually help you with training for, to be a preceptor. It'll also help you with a lot of other tools and ideas that you might want. Um, also, reach out to other preceptors and other mentors. Find out what they're doing on their sites. And uh, again, reach out to us. We really, the School of Pharmacy has a lot of resources. We've seen a lot of students go through this. We've had a lot of different scenarios. And when you have a problem or an issue, you need to let us know. Talk to students about feedback, not criticism. All right, give them feedback. If you tell them they're, they're a good for nothing, lousy student, that's not, that is criticism, that's not feedback. But if you tell them you need to work on your communication, be specific, you need to speak louder, you need to speak slower, you need to speak clearer so that they understand. And that can really make them feel bad, like I always thought I did, but yeah, you're nervous, you need to work on this. Give them feedback, be specific, Make sure they understand what you're saying and then be ready to give them feedback the next time they do it, both positive or um, constructive to make sure that they understand what they're doing. Communication skills are huge. Without communication skills, pharmacy is tough to practice. As you know, there aren't a lot of jobs where you don't have to use communication, so push that. Professionalism is big. It's part of their evaluation. There'll be a section on, did they show up on time? Are they prepared to do what they have to do each day? Are they showing up prepared uh, both um, uh, 
in appearance and attitude. Um, there are a number of things that come together with professionalism. And students don't always understand that. Remember, they're coming out of school. And in school, for some reason, they have an idea that they can look at their phone and look at their computer and then take in the lecture all at the same time when they really struggle with even doing just that very thing. So you need to remind them, this is real world, if you will. And remember, this is what professionalism looks like. You model it, they do it. You don't have to be never smiling or never joking, but you need to be focused. You need to let them know what's important and you need to call them on it right away. If they're late every day, then you need to set them down and say, we're going to write this down. I'm going to put this in a file or I'm going to, if, if this continues, we have to go to another level, which might include uh, removing you from the site, contacting the, uh, the school of pharmacy. Um, you, you have a job, you're a preceptor, but you also have a job. You need to make sure that that job is completed and there aren't distractions of it, such as a student who's not um, uh, complying with professionalism. One of the things I tell students all the time is, most of the time, preceptors will give you a, a little bit of a hard time if you don't have good drug knowledge. If you don't have good medication and drug knowledge, they'll give you a hard time, but they always will be disappointed if you're not putting in the effort and you're not showing the right kind of attitude all the time. That is accepting cr constructive criticism. That is uh, understanding what professionalism means. That is what we're expecting when they're on site, not always medication knowledge. And by the way, if, you're, if you see topics out there that you think a student might be weak in, every one of our students um, are given, for at least for their APPEs, are given a RX Prep um, handbook. It's a pretty good sized book. I pull it out, but it's underneath the computer right now to hold it off the table a little bit to keep it somewhat even in my face. But it is the RX Prep uh, course book. Um, they are required to do work in every single one of their, their APPE courses to make sure that they're reading, taking tests, learning what the NAPLEX style questions are like. But these chapters, um, this is not a reference book, it's a resource book. And this resource book has, is, uh, is really quite good. And I would expect, I, I don't have, we had to buy these for each one of the students. We don't have enough to have for all the sites and we don't have it on our, our library yet. But I would challenge you to take a look at the book and maybe even read a chapter. They're not as long as you think, but they are intense. People say, oh, this is the Reader's Digest and this is, this is just a small amount of material. These books are designed to get a student to get a uh, 113 grade on the NAPLEX, not a 75. 75 is the minimum competency, that's what this exam is, but they want you to do better than that. So these books are a great resource. If you feel like a student is not up to par, you may ask them to read DePiro or Goodman and Gilman's or Coda Kimball or, or the, one of the uh, non-prescription uh, handbooks. And that's fine, but you may find there a lot of this material is in this resource book, which they all have, and and uh, is, it's a great place for you to direct them to, and maybe even take a look at it yourself. As of note on that is when our students do have these, sometimes they'll say, I have all this Rx prep work that I have to do, so can I have half a day off to do that? And I would only say yes to that if that is in fact the way you planned the course to go for that student. But if they say that and you have you have planned for the next day for them to go to um, uh, you're, you're going to be working with an MTM situation or they're going to be doing something with vaccination or they're going to be doing something else. I would say, no, you're going to have to do that at home at night or on the weekend on your own, because that is an expectation that we have that they do these, but they don't have to take the place of what you're doing at your site, but it may be a chance for them to do something at the site and actually benefit you back. They may actually look at this and say, well, this is, this is something I read and learned and now I can teach back to everybody else. Um, but it's your, you're the preceptor, you're running this course, not them. They may ask, but they have to realize that the answer may not always be what they want. Please give uh, the school and staff feedback. Um, we ask for feedback. I want feedback. I want to know. I've heard some some pointed feedback at time. I, I've actually had some very great feedback that's actually changed the way we do our courses. It's changed the way we do our evaluations. We're still working through this. I feel like everything we do in life is a work in progress and we want to get better. So please let us know. Give us feedback. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I would I would like that maybe even on this video as well that might be I say video it's it's recording if you will because we don't use video anymore. I one thing another thing is um, the next two things are a big deal. The first one is be prepared for the exceptional student. You know that student you give a project to, 
and then you expect it. It's going to take two or three weeks. You set a date out about two or three weeks, so they're going to have it done and get it back to you. And the next day or the day after that, they show up and it's all done. You're like, uh oh, now what do I have to do? So be prepared for those kind of students. Offer them uh, in in um, undergraduate education and and in our high schools and, and middle and, and grade schools, they call it uh, differentiating your education. So if you have an exceptional student, you have to you have to cater to that kind of student. And that means get them some other project, push them a little higher. They may say, oh, I don't want to do more. And I said, yeah, you know what? But you need, if you want to be an exceptional pharmacist, if you want to be, um, do well in your NAPLEX here, let's, let's go through some new projects. Here's some new ones, but you need to be prepared to have projects in your pocket to say, here are some things we can do. You can also um, change the experience as well. For instance, in community, sometimes um, the student has had so much experience in community that you actually may have them do a lot more pharmacy-like things. They can't check anything, obviously, that's your job, but they can do a lot more pharmacy-like things because you have that confidence in them. Make sure that you do a, some sort of confidence that you feel they're, they're good at taking phone calls, they're ta good at dealing with a problem patient, with insurance issues, with uh, uh, ordering issues, with inventory management, with, uh, with, with talking, to the, talking to tough patients. You know, I think it's great. On the other side of it, you have to be prepared for that challenging student. That's the student that comes in to your hospital rotation and says, I'm going to be a community pharmacy. I don't really want to do this, but I know I have to. So whatever, just let me know what I have to do. I'm telling you, attitude needs to start. You need to start out with people. I'm looking for your attitude and I'm looking for your posturing. I'm looking for your professionalism. And you set that ahead of time. You set the dates firmly. And when they don't meet those debts, you need to call them on it. You need to give them feedback. Um, if, they're, if they're really a student that's very nervous, never been out, never done anything like this, and it's early in block one, two, and three, then you, you might need to work a little bit more with them. You need, might need to find a, a process that helps them and, and try to get some other uh, people to help you with that person as well. And they may need to step back from some of those challenging things you've had them do and work on some other things. But be ready for the challenging student. But I'll tell you, and I, and I, and I say this, they're far and few between, but there are some students out there who come with an attitude and we have flunked them from their rotation, we've removed them from their rotation, we will do whatever needs to be because we, the last thing I need is a preceptor to say, I'm having a horrible experience and the student is being totally resistant to everything I'm saying, then we have to do something. That's the extreme. I'm hoping we can get this person, we can bring out the Thor hammer, not to beat on him, but to say, this is my expectation. This is what I need, this is what I want you to do. Um, and please, even if it's even if it's a minor question and you you think you're heading down a path, call us up. I, I'm I'm always willing to listen. And, and if I don't get back to you right away, I, we're, Katie and I are very receptive. We 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 care about uh, what all of you are doing out there for you. I probably should have said in the beginning of this, um, this is this is not a shameless recruitment tool, but. We are, we are a college of pharmacy. We put students out on the site. So I want to offer you services, but I also want you to be a preceptor. It can be a great experience. It can be a tough experience. It can be a challenging experience, but any one of them will help you grow as a person and should really do something for a student. Look to create a service. Some of the ones we've talked about, medication uh, reconciliation, discharge planning, maybe there's an immunization clinic you could set up at your place and you have a special day when you have two students on and they can do them all. And uh, our students get trained before they go out on their appy so that they actually train before their third year. So they actually do all of our students here at the university. Um, the nursing and pharmacy kind of compete because they both want to do everybody. They want to do the most. So we have them do all our faculty. They, they do all of our students. They do everybody here. It's, it's actually, it's quite a nice thing to have, and it could be a benefit to, to pharmacists uh, out in the field. In conclusion, prepare, prepare, prepare. I know, tired of hearing it already. But if you do that, this will be a rewarding experience for you, and it'll make the next one easier, the next one easier. Because you're thinking, I'm doing kind of the same thing, but to them, it's unique every time. And for you, it'll be somewhat unique as well. Each experience is unique, mostly because of the student. Meet the documentation of all involved. You don't want to get behind in doing, when do I do my evaluations? When do I get it done? How do I get on the site? We'll help you with all of that stuff. And if you forget a password, you send it to Katie and within minutes, she can have it reset for you. Um, we can do anything to help you. We want to help you. We're appreciating what you do. 
stepping up to help this profession and help our students is outstanding and we want to be your support. This experience can be quite energizing. It can. It's, it's a lot of fun. When students get in, you kind of learn. I always ask them, where are you from? What do you do? What do you mean? I know their students these days are like, I don't want to talk about where I'm from or what I do, but they, 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 if, you, if they see you taking an interest in them, they'll work harder for you. That's true in all aspects of life for the most part. Um, and now in the future, you'll be a resource to these students and other preceptors. Um, it's rewarding to say that. It's rewarding to do that. And the only way to get this, and I was the first one to say, we didn't have pharmacy schools in Maine. I was a director of pharmacy at a small hospital, and they asked me for students. I was scared to death. Like, I don't know if I know anything. I was working on my PharmD because I only had my RPH from, from when I went to school way back when. Um, so what I, what I did was I decided just to do it. And I actually started taking two students at a time because I found that they could work with each other much better that I know this sounds like a shameless pitch, but I, I'm just saying it helped my site a lot better. Those students were actually able to do things not with me all day. I had a lot of tasks to do every day that I couldn't be with them all the time. They, once we got them indoctrinated into our system, they actually accomplished a lot more than I ever thought they would. I want you to have fun with us. I want this to be an experience that works for you and you want to have fun with it. It may not be laugh, giggly, you know, in the sky fun, but it, it definitely is a challenge that you can overcome. Anybody can if you want to. Um, here's the post questions. In order to provide a positive experience for both the student and preceptor, which is the most important factor below? Let the student make all the decisions that best fit their schedule. B, have food and snacks ready for everyone at the site. C, wait until the student is on site before setting the experience up for everyone. Or D, prepare the site in advance for the student. Right, you got it right, D, pretty easy. Students must be supervised in person by the preceptor at all times they are on site. True or false? False, they do not need to be, but they do need to have expectations set about where they'll be, what they'll be doing, and how they'll be doing it. Number three. So that the preceptor and all the participants at the site are part of a positive student experience, which answer is correct. Respect must be displayed by all, by the student for all members of the hospital and pharmacy staff. Each contributing hospital and pharmacy staff member must be prepared as to what is expected of them in relation to teaching or guiding the student. C, the school of college or college of pharmacy course and corresponding syllabus is the guide for each preceptor and student or D, all of the above. D, all of the above, right? You figured that out early, I know. If you have any questions for me, um, please contact us, okay? We can't really do this now, but it's part of my presentation, ask questions. I have references here. We use the pharmacist letter. I have an AS, ASHP document that I use, but here on this file, I probably should have put it on the slide before under questions. Frank McGrady, that's me. I'm the director of pharmacy, uh, director of experiential education here at Hudson University. Katie Rosignol is the manager of operations in the Office of Experiential Education. She's an outstanding resource. She is very responsive. She'll work very hard to make sure that you get the answers you need in a very timely fashion. Please let us know if you have any questions. Lastly, I've included at the end of this is a couple rotational, a couple programs that were out there. I got permission from these people. Um, the first one is uh, Dr. Cassandra Parsons. She's uh, our ambulatory care pharmacist uh, at the VA and a, and a and a faculty member here. This is what her six week rotation looks like. Here it doesn't have to be perfectly like this, but this gives you an idea for the student to know as well as the site to know what exactly is happening while that, with the six weeks that a student is there. She does this at the VA uh, at Togus in, um, in Augusta, Maine. Second one, this is an APPE block that was done by another one. This, this uh, faculty member also had an, uh, an ambulatory care site and they just kind of put down exactly kind of an outline of what they were expecting. This third time was a hospital rotation. This is what they expected each day of the student to be part of, what their day would look like, and what kind of activities they'd be participating in. All right, hold on a second here. No, I'll just leave it there. Thank you very much. We, would, we will have a, a set of questions that you can answer to get a credit. It would only be a main credit that you get at this point. We'll look for ACPE credit in the future. But if you have any questions, 
uh, please let us know. I hope you enjoyed this. And if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Thank you.